going on, everybody? Welcome back to another very special episode of the Burnout Brighter Podcast. This is episode 113. My name's Matt. I'll be your host for this evening's events. I'm joined as almost always, but I'm just going to say always because it sounds better. My lovely, wonderful co-host. Hey, hey, hey. Destiny. 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 Whoa, Did wherever. you forget my name? No, I it's forgot where I put you one every episode. time. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm confused. I just didn't know where to put you. And like you, Darren, both of your names start with D and an S to me, so it's fine. Um, And on this week's show, we are very, very excited and very grateful to be joined by someone who I'm honestly surprised made time for us, given how many incredible products they're working on. We have. So uh, lucky. Dead serious. Comics, screenwriting, games, and just a whole wealth of amazing content. We have Sun joining us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm really excited. <laughs> You're really popular. I just want you to know. I was talking to Dom from Yuki, and he was like, oh, "Your son's coming on your show," and I'm oh. like, "Yeah." And I like reached out to her, and he's like, oh, "Can you like like set up an introduction?" I was like, "I'll, I'll try." <laughs> <laughs> That's the nicest thing. I am no, so childishly very- like, oh. <laughs> You're so popular. Like, I'm, I was like shook when you were like, Yeah, I do the show. I was like, Matt, she's going to do the show. <laughs> like, I was, I'm just really thankful that, you, first of all, you were super considerate. I know I had to move it. So I really no, appreciate it. We understand. Like, yeah, things, yeah, things get busy, especially in this world where there's like always 100 things happening at the same time. Completely yeah. understandable. Oh. But if somebody somehow doesn't know you, son, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Yeah. So I'm son. As you've said, um, I am the studio director of Perfect Garbage. We're an indie award-winning studio. I've also written for comics. I have a graphic novel debut coming out in 2022 called Thief of the Heights. Uh, please check it out at your local bookstore. It's very excited about it. Um, I've also uh, am a screenwriter. I am currently working on a couple of short films, and Death Diner recently was finished, which is one of my first. And it's going on the you know like the film festival tour thing that they do before you're allowed to share your <laughs> your movie. <laughs> um, and it's directed by Ravenna, so shout out to Ravenna. But yeah, I do a lot of things, and I try to keep doing a lot of things because um, it's fun. <laughs> For sure, that. and I mean. Like- I was just like, I, I really and genuinely am so impressed by, by your work ethic and your talent because it's just like, me and Destiny are like, we have one show this week, stress. And it's yeah. like, you're, meanwhile, you're like, here's all of these amazing things that I'm doing. And it's incredible to see. So thank you for being, you know, a bit of an inspiration. It's awesome to look at. Yeah, oh, thanks a lot. definitely. A I really want to like get into narrative design. So like, just like having you on the show, I'm going to pick your brain. And even oh, afterwards, please. I'm going to pick your brain. Oh my- yeah, I'm no, really message sorry. me anytime. I'm happy to talk about it. <clears throat> like, my voice is going in and out because I got a little crazy Halloween night. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so. Good for you. <laughs> I yeah, stayed no. home. It's so funny. No. Because- <laughs> I played games. It's so, it's so funny. I, that like, was that's- my original plan. There you go. You Destiny and I had almost like a reverse Halloween because generally speaking, I'm like the one that's like, let's go out and party and have fun with everyone. And Destiny's like, I want to sit around with my closest friends and just hang out. And like <laughs> on Halloween, I went to a party and like sat like basically ignored almost everyone and sat around with my closest friends playing cards. Well, Destiny like went out and had a great time. So it's funny. Yeah, for like I, I went to like, downtown Nashville. It was great. I just have to say this one story. Like it's oh. a total tangent. Mm-hmm. So I've been watching Ted Lasso, which I'm absolutely yes. in love mm-hmm. with right? that show. Some random guy was dressed as Ted Lasso. And this is like when I was like three sheets to the wind. I was like totally drunk. And so like he walks up and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you Ted Lasso? Did you and touch his like, mustache? Yeah. No, I didn't touch him because he was oh, already right, freaking mass, out. But right. I was freaking out. Right. <laughs> and so my friend was like, I'm so sorry. She's been drinking a lot. Please excuse her. But she loves your show. <laughs> it was just like, You did great. You did amazing. <laughs> and he was just like, thanks. That is amazing. Did you do anything fun for Halloween, son? Um, I had a little get together. Uh, so, side note, another thing that I do is I'm in a PhD program, and so I, I got a little get together with my cohort, and we watched Scream. Yeah, oh I my God. that's like the side. I love thing. how she slipped that in. Oh, by the right? way, I'm getting my PhD. I was gonna say, like, how do I explain that? Like, they're <laughs> that great, great people. <laughs> but yeah, so that we is- watched Scream, and that was fun. And then, and then I played games the rest of the night. <laughs> But like, I oh love my her shoes. God, I you're her. so incredible. Right? Can we and be best like, friends? Like, I'll do anything. I can't <laughs> with it. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> and it kills me because it's like side hustle, PhD, no big deal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Anybody else, it it's like, this is my, the only thing that I can do. Uh, you know, a couple hours a week, PhD, I no big deal. That's incredible. Getting ready to go to the moon. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <I am. laughs> 
shooting oh, the first movie in space. Movie. No big deal. <laughs> um, right? Okay, Going so Musk, be- you know? Yeah, there you go. Oh, I just Musk. saw where he said he was he was trying to end world hunger and that he was willing to sell stock because it would Someone take $6 billion. Dollars, yeah. And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I was like, yo, that, that's kind of fucking incredible. Because I don't think there's ever been like a millionaire who has said it. I don't know if like it's going to actually happen. Yeah. But who has said like, yeah. yeah, I'll put up the funds to end world hunger. And then I was thinking, why hasn't that happened? Why has nobody who has trillions of fucking dollars just been like, you know what? Everybody deserves to eat. Just put the money up. Right. I mean, the, the dark part of me is like it'll change the political climate. Yeah, it will. And that's like the thing, right? right. So real I'm talk. I'm watching real Succession, talk. so <laughs> that's where, that's my Ted Lasso. I keep hearing about it. Is it good? No, I mean yes. Okay. It's really good. <laughs> is it good? No. No. I was like, I always feel really bad about because it's literally just a bunch of rich, like, you know, Fox News types are mm-hmm. like fighting but like everyone's casualty in like this type of thing and so like it's really great but it's like great because it's like it's like watching the kardashians kind of great except like right, highly okay. produced yeah so you're like oh these people are terrible but it's I fun watching them. but it's the really fun to watch yeah i couldn't do it yeah i, I think i saw like it. half a s- episode and i was like people I've with never... money like a lot of money annoy me when they're not doing like good things with their money, you know what I mean. Like I just can't. Exactly. I'm just like, do no, you no, really need I that? Get it. Fiftieth shade of lipstick, Kim. Do you, do you need it? Um, yeah. do you care I lost stuff? my earrings. Yeah. Oh my god. When and she started cool crying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> what did her sister say? There's people dying. <laughs> Kim. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was. She fucking lost her shit. <laughs> That is incredible. Oh, my God. Okay, moving along. Before we get any deeper into anything else, son, whenever we have a new guest on, we always act, like to ask them about a game that matters to them, a game that have got, has gotten them through a tough mental health period or just a game that they think is special and deserves to be celebrated. So can I ask you about a game that matters to you? Yeah, I feel uh, like I should have said, like I should have had like an indie game ready or things like that, but I actually didn't get into games until I was a little bit older. Okay. Um, like I, my first game was Kingdom Hearts on the PS2. I think when I was twelve, and I got nice. it as a gift for getting straight. You know what I mean? So like, I was nice. not really allowed to like yeah, play yeah. a lot of games growing up. And so one game that really hit me, I played it in high school, was like the first Dishonored from nice. Studios. It's a very, it's a very personal game to me. I really value it. I think that I definitely it influenced a lot of my writing style. I mm-hmm. think, and what I like about narrative design in games, I think that game really shifted my approach to narrative design growing up too. I think what they managed to do with such a small studio is like also pretty nuts. Like I know now, I don't know they got the you know they got the they system got the money, the like Bioshock yeah. Two and the pre money. <laughs> you know, yeah. they got the money now, but but. It, it was like a small team in a small game. I mean, small in, in a triple A standard um, mm-hmm. game. And they like had a lot of odds against them when they released it too. And it just blew up. And I'm like, not only is it my favorite game narratively, but it's like what I want to be. <laughs> so yeah. I look to, I look to that game a lot. So I, I have to ask, did you, how, how did you play Dishonored? Because when I did it, I did like the no kill run. Everything. Did you really? Everything, my first draft. I didn't know. I, I didn't game a lot. It was like the first like, game okay, yeah. that I played that was like, actually, maybe you should try stealth. Like, right. I, I, mean, I like played, I guns played blazing. <laughs> Everyone that mattered. I was like, oh, problem. <laughs> I actually, side tangent. I have one small story. I was like streaming it for a friend. And the main character doesn't speak. It's a completely silent protagonist, which is also amazing. I've mm-hmm. never liked a silent protagonist more. Um, and I, like, saved this woman from being harassed by a guard. It was, like, a very small thing. And I was so proud of myself. I was, like, saying, like, you're safe with me. Like, I was talking out loud. Like, I was excited about <laughs> it. But then I accidentally misclicked and I summoned rats and they ate her alive. <laughs> I, I, I was like, this is the definition of how I play this game. <laughs> Ah, oh, you're safe now. Don't worry about oh it. Oh my Rats. god! And then you're I'm just the standing there. You. Is she getting <laughs> devoured? And you're like, Oops. Yeah, it's, I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> I think it happened when I was in high school too. So I'm clearly still haunted by. It. Right? Yeah. yeah. The rats. The rats. Well, hold on. So how does that kind of bridge over? We'll get into the full thing a little bit later. But like, I mean, you're well, no, chimeric, right? That's a two-headed rat. There's, there's no bit of oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> a little well, bit of. PTSD leaking through there. I wish I 
wish it was. That's a genetics joke because my PhD is in genetics. And so. Wait a minute. Uh, oh my I God. Know. I'm sorry. You're I sorry for. That's incredible. Genetics? <laughs> yeah. That is, yeah. It's, it's You're so fucking evolution. smart. I'm not. Oh I God. really am not. I think yeah, I'm shut your it. mouth. <laughs> like, shut your mouth hole. Um, no, yeah. So that's like a big science joke between us is like chimeric and the two heads and right. the gene that's- like splicing. We don't even get the joke. But that's great. <laughs> that's how. That's how. Like we're not on that level. Later after the show, I'm be like, "Did you get that?" It's it's like that rat that. has and two heads. I don't know. I think they Google glued it. one on. <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> let's see. Oh, you guys are so nice. So I'm gonna get a heart attack. Um, <laughs> oh my god, that would it. that would be a yeah. First. That would that would no a heart attack don't from die kindness. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait till after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold off. Yeah, perfect. No, Thank but you so I mean, much. you think we're being really nice, but literally blown away by all the things that For you real. accomplish and that you oh. continue to do. Like, we lot, were, yeah. we are always gonna like uplift people and girl, like, please. That, again, I'm sorry, I keep reacting oh like God. that's so nice. No, <laughs> I've just you know, I've been in more spaces. people need to be saying that <laughs> shit to you. Like, yeah. what you write games and you're getting a PhD, girl. <laughs> you are what I want to be when I grow up. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm like, really? Legit. Okay. No I was just like curling over from compliments. You're <laughs> just, just like, like, I can't no handle more. the kindness. Stop being nice. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like, oh, you. Thank you. The puppy's like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he's here. concerned. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, that's amazing. So thank you for telling us about a game that matters to you. I love I love this segment. But let's, let's keep her going. Destiny, I'm going to throw to you next. Because, you know, it's been a minute. You weren't on the show with me last week. And I'm curious. Oh, I'm What's new? What's going on? No, don't be sorry. It's all good. What's new? Um... You know, I had some family stuff going on, so I couldn't be on <clears throat> last uh, week. And I'm sorry about my voice. It keeps going in and out like I'm going through puberty. <clears throat> Which, you know what? Random tangent. So I watched this clip of Leonardo DiCaprio, and he's like, I think it's like in the Iron Man, and he's like yelling, and he's like, he says something. And I was like, this man was going through puberty for like years. And then, bam, he was old. He I don't yeah, know. Right? Old. That, very he was suddenly. Just like, it was yeah. very sudden. It's like, like I he saw grew him. facial hair and it was Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Like, right? it, was, it was so yeah. over for me. Like he didn't grunge up very well. And I was just I like, wait, that's Leo. Yeah, he's not my yeah. No. Got, Henry Cavelli yeah. grunges up really nice though. Like yeah. I'm excited for the Witcher. Anyways, so um <laughs> Yes. That. I mean I also am excited for the Witcher. <laughs> yes. For the same yes, reason, yeah. you know? Yes. More bath shots. Anyways, yes. um, Part so, of the canon, so right. it is. He is. Oh my god. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's new? What's going on? What, what have you been doing? <laughs> uh, I so, could see the train know, was just like. <laughs> it's just like yeah. God. I could so, see like the spinning rainbow wheel in your eyes for a second as yeah, you were trying like, to figure uh, out where you were going. Loading the loading. Yeah. But um, for Halloween, that, that's really what I I spent most of my time doing. I dressed up as the Red Queen. For Halloween, and my best friend dressed up as the White Rabbit, and her husband dressed up as the Mad Hatter. So, oh, like, so we were like, yeah, we were like a little group thing, and that was great. Um, we got stuck in traffic for like an hour, and I was singing the Golden Girls remix. If you guys don't know what that is, I'm gonna give Matt <laughs> the link to it. It is the most amazing thing. Like, as soon as like the guy starts singing, and he like throws his head back he rips off his wig and it's just the most glorious moment in life that i've ever so i was singing that (laughs) to the detriment of the people who were in the car with me they also brought this um their friend um i forgot his name i'm sorry friend but like i was annoying the shit out of him because matt knows like when i've been drinking i become very friendly and i want to be everybody's friend so we got lost because we couldn't find the parking lot that we parked in because both of the parking garages look exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we kept going back and forth trying to find it. But on our way, I kept stopping people and like complimenting their costumes and stuff. And he was getting mad because like <laughs> it took us like an extra 45 minutes to get to wherever the Worth car it. was. Yeah. So right. and then yesterday we dressed up as Velma and Daphne and nice. we handed out candy to the kids which was really really cute so that's Adorable. kind of what i've been up to yeah and i haven't played any games oh i lied wow. i created my character on elion which mm-hmm. is from bluehole studios who also did terra which is mm-hmm. a game i absolutely love um it's an mm-hmm. mmo so it finally dropped on steam october 19th uh-huh. so um yeah, it gorgeous. Does it look it's, good? Look, it's so gorgeous. Any MMO coming out of Korea looks like fucking. Is it free to play? It's free to play, girl. <gasps> 
You should. Do you play MMOs? I used. I have a, an addictive personality, oh, so okay. I try to avoid them a little bit. But I, if I play them, I'm playing. I used to play League. Like I used to be like. Oh shit! Oh, I used to be really high ranking. <laughs> I used to waste a lot of time on League of Legends. So Damn. I try to like maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Every time she opens her mouth, it's a new beautiful like thing. Oh, that was that beautiful. She's done. That was That's like my amazing. lowest time in college. <laughs> no. Listen, I how know many what girls sit there and say, "Yeah, I used to be pretty high in league." Because guys are always like, you know, it's nice to see a female who was like, "Yeah, I used to fucking like waste people." <sighs> I used to be great. Yeah, um, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> But that's Definitely still weak. dope. I went out yeah. on a date with a guy recently who played League. This is random. And oh, no. um like <laughs> like after we like made out, like his friends were beeping him on like Discord. You guys people our listeners know way too much about my life. Anyways, mm-hmm. so like <laughs> he's like playing it. And um this was a while ago though, guys, for anybody who's listening, like if they're like, damn, I don't have a chance, you still have a chance. This is like, don't worry about it. Don't um, worry about it. <laughs> like <laughs> so he's playing League of Legends, and I just I can't get into it. Like I watched him for maybe five minutes, but I was just like, oh, okay. But he was yeah. really bad at it too. So um, I, it takes like it takes like someone to sit you down and play it with you for a while. Like you actually have that stupid like beginning like uh, thrall. So there's it's a very, it's like an MLM. You know, you got to be hooked uh, in yeah. by like a neighbor. <laughs> Okay. Who's playing it, and then you're like, suddenly you're playing it, and you're hooking someone else in because you want to. It a team. sounds like a cult. Right? It is a cult. Somebody Peace comes to your door and be cult. like, "Do you want he to join it. the Church of Lol?" Yeah. What do you oh mean? Like, <laughs> like, oh my god, it, it's bad. But I, I yeah. love MMOs. I tried to get into Final Fantasy fourteen. I, I actually tried to get in with my I friend couldn't. Sam. We couldn't. It's it's the it's the subscription model, which I usually think is like. My hot take is that I think subscription models are way better than like, you know, loot box drops or yeah. like, yeah, like yeah, transactions. Yeah, yeah. Rather pay consistently up front <laughs> than mm-hmm. pay in secret. Yeah. But um, even then, it's with the subscription and how many hours we could dedicate. We just couldn't justify like mm. keeping it going. And yep. I made like two cute cat boys, was very excited. And then I <sighs> got it back into it to make a bunny boy because I was very excited again. Mm. And then and each time I last a week and then I'm like, all right, I'm done now. Yeah, yeah I can't, I can't I do bad. it. I can't um, deal with the cooldown time because it's to me it's very like kind of not archaic but very old school like wow where like you're just sitting there and then mm-hmm. and I was like no I need to you be build able to an move AI around. to run it for yeah. you yeah just... yeah and it's like then I don't feel like I'm playing right so I like Tara because you're like you're very engaged in the fighting you're moving around and you're destroying shit and I like going in games and just obliterating things so like um I also started uh BDO again Black Desert Online which literally yeah. has the most intense creation uh set up for your character like it's so intense um I got into that again and um my friends are like where are you at and I'm just out there killing stuff <laughs> I'm not even doing the mission. You, and then- I, I want your Rex at the end because I want to. I want to. I've tried playing. I'm playing Divinity right now, which is like okay. a small, nice. like a very small, like with a friend, safe, yeah, yeah. like story yeah. party. Listen, but I definitely will. I will dip my toe again. Please, we are gonna. Just, I'm serious about being best friends. I want to be able to be like, yeah, my friends like getting a PhD in genetics. Like we're best <laughs> friends and everything. Like I hope it rubs off on me. <laughs> but seriously. So wait, you made your character, and then what happened? I okay, so ends. like the only shitty thing that's how it ends in D and D. I make the character, and then I never yeah. go back. But um, you you know when you make a character to play with people, mm-hmm. and then those people don't make the time to play, and then you've made this great fucking character, and then it's just sitting there. That's where we're at <laughs> because they're like, we're gonna play this weekend. And then, like, you message, like, all right, you guys down to play? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And so, like, uh, months later, you then you play it. I made this amazing character, guys. Like, she looks so good. I wish I had a picture of her. Like, I made her kind of ugly on purpose. So she's, like, this kind of beefy warrior. I can't remember what they're called. But, like, I gave her, like, one eye that's completely white and then, like, a scar over her face. So it nice. looks like, you know. That's yeah. Yo, she's fucking dope. She has like this pixie cut and she's just like, what up? So <laughs> I'm really mad that I can't play her because they're taking 
fucking forever. Like we did this two weeks ago. Like how we should have been friends? playing by now. How many? How, how is it like a party? Because usually the trick is just doing it with one person. Because you can you can it's a, guilt trip one person. <laughs> it's a party. There's like oh, it's rough. Three that's other rough. people. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. Maybe we well, I, I, I hope you get person. to run that character soon, D. What about you, son? What have you been up to lately? What's new? Hi. Um, I have been trying to stay afloat. Halloween was really, really great. I've been playing Disco Elysium. I, nice. I'm so super good late. Game. Good it game. is so good, but it's gonna. I, I last night I picked it instead of reading a book, and then I played it, and I was like, I should have read a book. Like I'm reading a book right now. You're reading a book anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like so I know heavy. this. I yeah. know this, and still, still I played it. Yeah. Um, so I think I need to take my time with it and maybe read a book. Uh, uh, it's really good though. And so I've been playing Disco Elysium, which has been phenomenal. I've been reading a lot. Uh, actually, I'd love to give a shout out. Uh, uh, an amazing writer that I know, Cassandra Ka, just released um, her novel, Nothing But Black and Teeth. I actually have it. I'm like, I've been reading it. Um, Ooh, that is a really cool really cover. Good. That looks cool. Yeah, Can you yeah. show that again? It's like, it's like a yeah. horror. Uh, highly recommend Ooh. Cassandra Ka's Nothing But Black and Teeth. Super, super fun. Very like short read, so you can read it in a day if you're into it. Anyway, I've been reading it. It's phenomenal. I think Cassandra, she's a game writer as well. So if you're into nice. narrative and things, she's known for some really amazing narrative work. Some of your favorite games, which I don't want to pull up at the top of my head. <laughs> but she is. Um, but yeah, I've been reading that. And I've also been reading uh, uh, my co founder, uh, Emmett, of Perfect Garbage. Uh, he's also written a novel that's like currently in the works, but it's like not. It's you know what I mean. He's just finished writing it. Mm-hmm, and I've been reading that too, which has also been very good. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, it's so cool having like friends who are into that, all the kind of that, all, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Because it's just like yeah, yeah I don't I'll know read how my I can friend's book. No book. big deal. Yeah, I'm just right? like my Emmett's complaining. Like I have to. I'm trying to think of my next book, and I was like, your next book? <laughs> <laughs> just finished. You Come just on. finished this book. <laughs> Um, that is incredible. Yeah, that's a skill I don't have. So I'm very impressed by people who write long form prose. That's nice. That's right. awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, uh, as for myself, I was gonna. I was gonna say, hey Matt, I'm gonna wait. I saw you look in your eyes. I saw you look in your eyes. As for myself, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be. So Matt, what have you been up to? It's been Thank a minute. You. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as for myself, I finished up Lost Judgment. Uh, loved the game. <gasps> Nice. So, so good. I'm a massive RGG Studios fan. So for me, going like finishing it was an awesome ride. Uh, I Wait, I'm so sorry. How did you feel about the creator leaving the Yakuza series? I am a little bit nervous, but a lot of people are very excited about the person, the people that are taking over who handled mm-hmm. a lot of the narrative work on the like, Yakuza 7. So I yeah. feel like it's like now is the kind of the time they just have like the their best new, time. Yeah, yeah they have like... Ichiban as a new pro tag. They have a new direction to go in. So I feel like it's, it's the right moment for it to happen. Um, I am still sad about it. It still sucks. That guy has an incredible legacy. So like it is what it is, but I'm curious. I'm so curious to see what he'll do next along with what the team is going to do next. Cause like obviously it cause eight's in the works. Um, mm-hmm. But lost judgment was fantastic. I love how like it really dealt with some really interesting aspects of mental health. And given how drama heavy those games can be, I actually think they handled it relatively well. It's not perfect, but I think it's a really good depiction of how badly things can go. If things are left unchecked, and if like bullying does run rampant, just the depth that people can kind of go to. Um, mm-hmm. Really, really good. And I've been playing Guardians. I uh, actually started streaming finally. So come hang out on Twitch.tv slash Burnout Writer 7. Um, I've been playing Guardians of the Galaxy. Loving it. It is. Oh, <laughs> is it as good? I've been seeing like tons of praise. So I am a massive Marvel fan. So like mm-hmm. for me going into it, I was already stoked. And like, I, I don't know, based on what we've seen leading up to the game, I was expecting like a six to a seven. I was like, if this thing is a fun Guardian story, that's all I expect from it. But like the writing is fantastic. The Guardians never shut up. They're constantly bickering and talking to each other. I it's, love that. The, all the character work is fantastic. I actually think so far, this is my favorite iteration of the Guardians period. It's almost like if you take their comic versions and their movie versions and take the best parts of both and take out the shitty parts of both. Mm-hmm. It's like they're you know, emotionally like aware and they're aware of what they're talking about. And the game doesn't shy away for things like grief and suffering so far. Like it's, it's really, really well put together. The combat's a lot of fun. Uh, mm. And like, there's just tons of different, like, you know, references to stuff. So like, I was literally walking around one of like the, the collector's museum today and being like, Oh my God, this, Oh my God, that, Oh my God, that. And I was like freaking out. Um, but like, it's, it's surprisingly awesome. I'm like genuinely so happy with what they've done with the game. And like, if this is kind of the new bar for Marvel going forward, because like, I think it, 
depending on how it continues, it could live up to what Spider-Man has started because we don't talk about Avengers. Um, but I like, yeah, it's legit awesome. It's so good. Yeah. So like, oh. I'm having a blast with it. I have and to pick it up. You really should. It's so good. Um, and I've lost myself to Mythic Quest. I kept hearing about it. A I kept classic hearing about it. or the new one. The, yeah, the show uh, on oh, Apple. Oh, Mythic Quest. Yeah, Why did yeah I on Apple. TV. Oh, it's the guy who plays Mac from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That show. Yes, gotcha, yes, gotcha, gotcha, yes, gotcha. yes. I kept hearing about it and I was kind of like, oh, whatever. Like the only reason I use Apple Plus is for Ted Lasso. And like, you know, the only reason I have it is because I got six months of it free with the PlayStation. But I was like, I kept hearing about it and I dove in and it is fantastic. Like genuinely so much fun to watch. The characters are all assholes in the best way possible. It's one of those situations where like they're all dicks, but you can't really hate any of them. Like mm-hmm. they have like a certain brand of like, okay, I do care about you. And like just super, super good. It's like only like it's in, like I'm in season two, season three or four just got confirmed for renewal. And like, it's really good. And like, I feel like it, handle, it actually handles like a video game esque story without like dumbing it down or being like, what is this? It's a game kind of thing. Like it's, it's really, really well put together. I'm loving it. So like if anybody hasn't watched it yet and has Apple plus or can find it on the high seas, highly recommend it. It's awesome. I'm really, really liking it, but yeah, that's, that's been me. Oh, very quick Halloween tangent. I was dressed up as stitch giving Halloween candy to the kids yesterday. And there was this one little girl who like I gave, she used to, she must've been like three or four years old, but like all of her, like she was with her, with her siblings and stuff. And like, I guess her older sister had rung the doorbell. So as I was giving out the candy, she looked very upset and her mom was like, okay, let's go, let's go. And she's like, "Mm." and she was like pointing at it. And her mom was like, I hate to ask this, but like, she's sad because she didn't get to ring the doorbell. Can she ring the doorbell? So like I closed the door and she rang the doorbell. I opened up the door and she looks at me and she goes, more candy, please. And I was just like, (laughs) and her mom was like, no, no, no more candy. Like we've already asked these people for enough. I was like, you fucking better believe she's getting more candy. That's so right here. That is so charming. Let her get what she wants. Right? I was like, I will let her ring the doorbell and have as much candy as she wants. Ignore the barking dogs. Um, but like just adorable. So I, I loved it. I love Halloween. It's one of my favorite times of the year. So it was just one we of those tried to give where... a little girl extra candy because she like helped her little brother up. He was dressed as Darth Vader. He had to be like two or three. So like he didn't want to come up. He was like uh-huh. scared of us because we were sitting on the porch. Tangent, Jackie didn't want to turn on the porch light. And I was like, you know how fucking creepy that is? Yeah. Because like, we had we had like kind of like Christmas lights up, but they're like orange and purple. Mm. And I was like, no, n- no kids are going to want to come up here yeah. like, sitting like this and playing <laughs> fucking Halloween music. Come but yeah, some candy. Help, yeah, like uh, she helped her brother up. And then like she was walking back and me and Jackie made little packets. So for kids who have allergies, like uh, there's like little toys in them instead of like, you know, peanuts and like candy with peanuts and stuff like that. And mm. she's like, oh, like, can we give your daughter this little pack of candy? Like she was such a good helper. And he was like, no, she has enough candy. And I was like, who, <laughs> who does that? Like, that sucks. Just take it her away take later. The candy. Like, yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> right. Oh, whatever. Oh, well. I hope he listens. Yeah, Always. right. Should have just let her have the candy. Bro. Yeah, seriously, just give her the candy. It's Halloween. This is the only time she's going to be getting year. free candy I know. like this. Every time else, it's like it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was no Halloween last year. Let him enjoy it. Whatever. Fuck. Anyways, let's let's move over into our main topic, which is all about sun. So where I kind of want to start, just the, just the be- where I want to where <laughs> I want to so begin. Scared. I know, right? Is know. is is the beginning of the story. So I want to know, how did you break into this industry? Because like we've talked about, you're, you handle so many different projects. What was, what was the OG? What kind of, what kind of was that moment where you were like, this is the thing that I want to do. Where did you start? I played Dishonored high school. Okay. And then I was like, so, I need to do this. She's so, like, I played Dishonored. She I know, it really got project, to me. Right? Um, so uh, I always knew I wanted to get into games and I can actually give you a very like, it's a, a realistic answer. Like a, mm-hmm. there's no like glorious moment that I like, was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be in the game space. Um, mm-hmm. It's that I realized just through working on comics and kind of being around in the industry about script writing is that narrative design is a really new field. In fact, it only didn't come into games until about six years ago, officially, as like a title. And even okay. now, if you apply to AAA studios, narrative design keeps changing what the actual tasks are. It's different than just being a writer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my answer to that is video games is nearly impossible to get into through a writing standpoint. 
Um, you can go to school and get a graduate degree in game writing and you still won't get a job. You can apply and you still won't get a job. And it's because they don't train juniors in writing oftentimes, but they want senior positions filled. And you can't have a senior position right. unless you've been writing for five years for an already established game studio. Do you see this problem? Yes. Yeah. That so is what I realized that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I realized that pretty, pretty abruptly. Um, about four ish years ago when I was trying to get in and I, and I had written for comics, you know, I was screenwriting at the time, but just beginning um, that and I knew that this wouldn't be a thing I can get into because it's also a highly condensed network as well. Um, ga- gaming. And I'm going to I'm always frank about it. I think the game industry is very um, social based. You've got to know folks and you've yeah. got to get into rooms with folks to get folks to listen to you or to be interested. And that's why social media is so huge for a lot of game devs. Um, so I knew that if I wanted to get in, I would have to make something on my own <laughs> and like force my way in a little bit. Right. Uh, so I called Emmett, who's my co-founder, as well as Cabo is another co-founder of ours. Uh, and we teamed up and decided to make Love Shore, which was our first game. Uh, we kickstarted it. Uh, we funded this successfully. Yay. Uh, I had a lot of trials and tribulations after, (laughs) um, COVID (laughs) happened, things like that. Uh, Mm -hmm. thankfully, uh, we recently signed a deal with Xbox, so we will be launching on Xbox and we received congratulations. That's incredible. Congrats. That was, it was a big deal for us. It was a very big deal. Um, and we received uh, funding for another project, which is actually the big announcements coming tomorrow. So I don't know when this comes out. It Wednesday. comes out on Wednesday, so you can oh, talk okay. about it. So there's going to be an IGN announcement that we were one of the recipients of the Moonrise Fund, which is a really big deal. So our game studio is... Congratulations! Thank Congratulations! You. That's oh incredible! My God, that's Amazing! Huge. Yeah! yeah that, means, that means a lot. So you're the first to know, technically. Um, but we'll be... Everyone will yeah. know after this is released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's a big deal for us. So we've been growing steadily um with our goal is always to be a self-sustaining studio we really want to make content with uh black and brown main characters and in genres that are pretty mainstream Um, i love that i love that because we need it so much representation matters i am always yelling and screaming about diversity Mm -hmm. in games and like we just don't have enough like i love that you're focusing on that really yeah like i want to cry it's such a good thing no i'm serious like I'm pretty old. We're not going to talk about how old I am. But I just remember growing up and, like, not seeing myself. So I would always play something that was closest to me. And it was always, like, Princess Peach. Because it's a girl, so I'm going to play a girl. There were never any, like, you know, black characters in games. I think the first one I played was Princess and the Frog. Like, the first character that was a black female Mm -hmm. character in a game was from a Disney movie. And I was just like, not, I don't know if that's the first one out there. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that was like the first like major you one. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And then you're a fucking frog. So, you know. So that's so funny. Okay. I know I keep bringing up Dishonored. <laughs> no, 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 But the main character, Corvo, you never see him because it's the first person. But he's in a very French coded society. Well, it's based off like European, but the studio is from France and they use a lot of French architecture. And so in my mind, because he's an outsider and they constantly call him an outsider. I used to think he was Algerian because I'm Algerian and we were colonized by the French. And so I was like, this is a brown man running around in a white city and trying yes. to like just find out what's going on. And so I totally get it. I have a. Uh, I've always strived to seeing more representation in games. And I think indies are doing a great job of it. And I think AAA yes. is like getting better and better at it. Um, but yeah, that's how I got started. I like literally just. Fun fact. <laughs> got I, I like knew you were a person of color. I don't know how. I didn't see any pictures of you. I was just like, I can tell. Like, I can tell that son's a person of color. I didn't know which color you were or what kind of background you had. But yeah, I just knew. Wide. I was North just like, African. she just seems like. She like she'd be down with the brown and in and, and not the sexual way. I don't I don't know. I didn't mean it like that, but I just meant like I could tell that like you would want to be like you you are about diversity and representation just from like looking at your feed and seeing the people you interact with and the people who follow you because like I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like look up pictures of you. So I was just like, no, I can tell. And then you showed up and I was like, Yeah, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's a big compliment because I think it's really, really important. So I'm really glad that at least, like, even in a social sense, I can exemplify that. I think it's really cool. And I think that, you know. Absolutely, cool girl. Things. Yeah. So is Love Shore the, the, is, is Love Shore the one that's getting the announcement tomorrow? Is that more information about that coming or is that for a different project? No, so that's for our studio. So what we've oh, okay, done. okay, cool. Yeah, as PG is that we've kind of gotten initial funding from Kickstarter, uh, squeezed it dry. 
uh, uh-huh. among all of us. And then we received uh, porting funds from Xbox. So we're porting on Xbox. And so that's all for Love Short only. Mm-hmm. This other fund, uh, which we got recently, was what, what was allowed us to spearhead another project that I have to be very secretive about. But let's right. just say it's mechanically heavy in the fighting category. Oh, Ooh, an ready. MMO. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> With our size? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I wish... Oh, Talk about not having time. Oh my god. I would love to make an MMO. Oh my god. Right. You know what? You never know. Final Fantasy fourteen was considered con- technically a commercial failure, I think, when it first launched. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Like, relaunched bad. It, it was yeah. Yeah. bad. And that's so, like a hero story. It's like a no man's sky story. You know, you're right, like, right. wow, somehow you managed to come back. <laughs> Seriously. So tell us a little bit about Love Shore then. Give us give us yeah. like the synopsis. So Love Shore, wow, I haven't given the summary in so long. I used to have it like, you know, <laughs> like speed run in it. Um, Love Shore is a cyberpunk visual novel. Um, it's a, it's also a crime noir. Uh, and you follow two S-humans, which in our world are, are like basically cyborgs, Fara or Sam, two completely different characters. You pick them at the start and you follow their storyline over a couple of days as you realize that the city that you live in and work in um, is run by underground gangs that are controlled by gods. So they're all gods, ancient gods, who are basically about to duke it in a war, and your city's in the middle of it. And so you're playing these two characters, forming relationships, trying to figure out what happens, and trying to survive by the end of the three days that you have oh in my game. God. I'm this in. That sounds, sounds fucking cool incredible. Right? Is it oh, on yeah. Steam? There's a demo on Steam. Um, okay. Yeah, so you could definitely play the demo. The full game hasn't been released yet. Like I said, we're simul shipping mm-hmm. with Xbox. So late next year. I'm going to demo it. Oh, please do. I'm, yes. You know, we continue talking. I I'll might do a review early on it. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep talking yeah. to me. Well, maybe later. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Wink, wink. But, um, yeah, it's it's very fun. Uh, it's got dating sim mechanics. When we pushed it on, you're saying yeah, all of the right things. When we yes! pushed it on Kickstarter, we were like, it's got to have some dating. It's got to have some romance. That's yes. what got the buyer aware people. I yes. live vicariously like, through dating romance. <laughs> oh, great! It's I want to warn again. It's a crime thriller. I always pre warn, so it's rated R. Um, yeah, it's very action heavy. It's very like you know, I, if I had to comp title it, it's very like. You know, Blade Runner, John Wick as Ooh, type of story. So neon okay. lights. I'm I'm a hardened criminal. I've been yeah. <laughs> hard you know? boiled. Yeah. Hard boiled. I'm, right when they think I left, they pull me back in. I'm like yeah. that's like the whole vibe. Yeah. But, I love um, it. This yeah. sounds like what I wish Cyborg 27, 27 Cyberpunk. Tw- yeah. Cyberpunk. I don't know why. I said Twenty seventy seven. You're right. Though. Yeah. This sounds like what I wish that was mm-hmm. i mean i know yeah. that's what it's supposed to be but yours just sounds so like sexy i don't know right <laughs> i'm so sexy. stoked <laughs> and like visual novels are like both of our our shit so like yeah this oh, game really? sounds fucking awesome. oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i should have known because i know danny was talking to y'all and i love validate and what they're doing so yeah that's really oh, yeah. exciting dong and rampa is one of like my favorite series of all time and that's like oh, wow. as fucked as uh, that's th- that series gets pretty fucking messed so like this this, <laughs> ser- this sounds dope i'm so into this See, that's a better choice than me. I grew up on BL, like Japanese visual novels way back in the day when you had to like illegally download them with like an illegal translator, like uh-huh. you know, the whole system you had to do. I remember that. That was rough. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's totally cool. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so excited for Love Shore. This sounds really, really awesome. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. it up right now. Yeah, we have a really <laughs> cool my other trailer. monitor. I'm like really excited about the trailer. So you should please show the one that's from 2021. We were at uh, E3 this year so we had a, like a new trailer and we did like a little 3d modeling in the beginning which we were all like testing to see <laughs> if we could the do character, it the character design is really oh it's already on my wish list how did i know <laughs> <laughs> i probably saw fall in love cyberpunk yes yeah i was gonna say destiny art. if somebody wanted to kind of help out love shore as we've talked about how many times well i mean what should they do they should probably go and wish list it Yay! yes because it lets Steam know that this game is something that people want. And honestly, you're going to want it. It's mm-hmm. like cyborgs, I'm assuming, some sexual tension, which I absolutely always, love. Always, always. Oh, There's like some enemies, some, yes, some childhood friends. Some fighting. We, we mix There's it all gods, There's, manipulation. What, there's something for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like... It sounds like JRPG is fucking the best way. Like, you know, that. of course you're going up against gods. I'm in. I'm there. Yo, I'm going to make a video on it. The like, I'm downloading cool. the demo right now. Like, I, I, I think the last demo yeah. I did was on fucking Your Boyfriend, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was a visual novel that. about a psycho. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah. If, oh my god, I was freaking out. I talk a lot in the video, so if stuff happens, I'm like, "What the fuck? Are you serious?" <laughs> like, I will show you that video. It's, it was yeah, send really it my way. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love the end. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, so then that's coming. You know, that's that's a little bit down the road. So yeah. something that I wanted to ask is because, like, I love Perfect Garbage as a name. I think it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, of, one of my best friends always talks about how like he wants to get a cat and name it Garbage just for the sake of, you know, the perfect, you know, it's a wonderful name yeah. for a cat. It's a good name. Uh, exactly. It's a fantastic name. So just based off of like the name alone and let's, let's, you know, step off Love Shore for a second. What kind of other yeah. stories are you looking to tell in, in the future? Right? Like I'm not saying yeah. like, you know, like what. Just oh, don't worry. I got a mission whatever. statement. I know exactly where the studio perfect. is going. Uh, like we plan... Our goal is genre bashing, like through and through. So every game that we make, we want to combine two different genre elements. Uh Um, So Love Shore is combining a lot of crime thriller with the cyberpunk aspect, but we also have RPG mechanics in Love Shore. So you can choose your your, uh, actions, build stats in the background. So like Farah is stronger than Sam, Sam is smarter than Farah, and those stats change how you play. So we care about that stuff. Um, In our next game- I don't know if you know this, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but RPGs are our shit. Your mm-hmm. second, like, the yeah. like, RPGs. We give yeah. them RPGs up. are, sh- no, for real. Like, oh yeah. my God, this is sounding so good. I can't wait to play the demo. Okay, keep going. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're big fans of that. And so, like, in our next game, Secret Secret, where we have a combat system that's married to a narrative thing, and it's like a system that's working, and I can't, I can't explain more. Mm-hmm. But all of our games are going to be combining two elements from uh, different aspects of gameplay and trying to bring them together. And that way... I feel like we're always making a new style of play with whatever we do Mm -hmm. um, so that it feels like a new experience. And ultimately our goal is to always bring in narrative, like storytelling at the forefront in some way. Uh, We're a big narrative team. We were started by two writers. (laughs) So unfortunately (laughs) it's going to be a narrative heavy studio. That's amazing. That's incredible. I'm trying to convince them to let me make my uh, uh, Victorian horror coffin wielding story. And they said, no. So Why? the team has said no. Oh, uh, for good reason. <laughs> like, oh, okay. good reason. <laughs> but just know that I, I have a dream and it's to make a coffin, <laughs> coffin action game. It's like your lover's in it and you open it up and she punches. Like that was like the vibe. That's like Demon Slayer as saw something. Yeah. yeah. Where they opened it and a little girl was in the back and she Demon did Slayer. something. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking I haven't more seen horrifying Demon Slayer. skeleton. Of course. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Like Corpse oh, Jesus. So, you know, like yeah, yeah. You know like Shaman King and his wife. Yes. And that and oh. that, that yeah, the, the doctor like that vibe. But like a game. Nice. And you just build I can stats see for this. Your wife. I could see that happening though. Mm-hmm. Like right? they would make an anime like, about it immediately. Why not make a game? Right? We'll see. I'll, I'll, t- I'll reach out in five years if I get my way. Please. <laughs> yeah. Follow your goals, guys. This After is what this, this is all one. about. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I have a really quick question for Matt because I saw Matt gearing up to ask one. I was about to my- throw it to you, actually. But yeah, Were you going to throw it to me? Yeah, oh, yeah I was going to ask him before I asked him. I was going to put it go. <laughs> so my question <laughs> is, <laughs> as, <laughs> as a person who is trying to get into game writing, me, I'm talking about me. Um, who? What would me okay me from the press pool uh matt sawinski from burnout brighter who's trying to get into game writing destiny Cleveland thank you from question answered go on all right thank you <laughs> question answered. <laughs> um what would you suggest like what would you suggest i do like do you feel that you need to like make your own game so the thing is is that i have a small team and we have been working on stuff but like we're not programmers you know what I mean? We're artists and storytellers. But do you think that's really the best way to like get into it? Because so many people have told me different things and I've got like conflicting information. Yeah. So I don't know like if I'm doing it right or if I'm doing it wrong. And for anybody else who might, you know, just love storytelling and possibly getting into it, because I agree when you like said all the stuff about like kind of like the linear uh storyline of how to get into gaming i was like that's exactly what it is like i applied for a triple a studio and i was super excited and they got back to me after seeing my little my little uh my little writing portfolio which isn't much to like brag about but they got back to me and like i had to do a writing test and then they like really liked the writing test but then because i didn't want to move to california yeah. Um, they were like, oh, we're going to go with somebody locally, which I'm just going to say this if they're listening. If you had told me that at the beginning, I probably never would have applied. But <laughs> I, I am actually really confused. Uh, 
because a lot of people have been stopping remote work too recently and i'm like this is very bold because if you really are championing like getting perspective and diversity and other things like that you're not gonna get it from like some france like it's not gonna yeah. be in france like please yeah. reach out to other people um but um i i definitely agree i see where like i've i've been in your shoes um uh, two things that I found really helped me. Um, so I've worked for some AAA studios now uh, on contractual writing work, which has been great and super, super fun. Uh, like I said, being a senior lead, which is like, you know, I think the end goal all of us want is it takes a lot of years and you have yeah. to have built a portfolio. And specifically how they get you is that you have to have shipped games. So yes. you've worked on projects, but you're it's not done. Like I've worked on something and it might not come out for a few years. So I'm sitting here like, I will have a shipped game. But like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you just years. wait. Yeah. <laughs> just wait. Yeah. Um, it, it's tough. And so uh, a few things I learned is one is to make your own game. It doesn't have to be programmed heavy. It doesn't have to be anything like intense. Uh, a great example of, I think, an amazing writer who's done something cool is CC Zhang on Twitter, uh, who made a twine game uh, about, uh, I think, um, a retelling of, I, I don't remember exactly. I think it's a retelling of Mulan. Um but it's like culturally accurate and a pretty well amazing storyline. Um, and I think that's the great way to show your writing or bringing samples is like making small projects that execute good narrative design. Um, because oftentimes when they say they're looking for a game writer, they want someone who knows how to implement as well. They're not really saying that, but they want someone who knows yes. how to implement and how to design um, because you want to be able to build with what tools you have. Um, and so having games in your portfolio, like small games with the scripts on the side for them for easy access actually helps a lot. Um, okay. Twine games, you can use RenPy and make VNs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's other ways, RPG Maker, things like that. There's tons of like little tools. Don't kill yourself over it. It doesn't have to be like a magnum opus of a game. Like It doesn't okay. have to be like, this is everything that represents me. It's my game. It's me. <laughs> it can literally be something you make like on a weekend. Um, but you're proud of it and that's it. Um, I really recommend having those because I think those always, always help. How um, many do you think you should have like in your portfolio? I don't think you need many. Um, I mean, I only have one and that was like love short. Now I have like quite a few, but, uh, when I started or when I was reaching out, I had like just love short and I had the script of it and the demo to show that I knew what I was doing. Um, that's really it. Um, you, you, <laughs> I'm sure you could have more than one or two, but I think if you just have like one or two, it does exactly the job that you need it to do, which is show, I understand what games are. I know how to make like games in a narrative way. And I know how to execute a narrative that the pacing feels like, oh, this is interesting. Um, Cause everyone can kind of put words on a screen, but if you can pace it, like that shows that you have game, me like mechanic mm -hmm. awareness and mm -hmm. they love that stuff. Also always say, and you're like, so this is the CV stuff. Say you're good at branching narratives. <laughs> that will help. They love, everyone is trying to make branching narratives. Bioware yeah. like has built an amazing career off of it. It's great. Um, and if you know how to build it, which like Twine will teach you if you play with Twine or RenPy, if you're making a VN, uh, just say that you're, you know, I'm comfortable with this skill. I can do it. That's also a great thing. Um, you don't have to be a programmer for sure to make games. Would you rep I mean, would you recommend one over the other, like Twine or um, VN? Would you say it was VN? What was it called? Yeah, VN? Uh, RenPy. It's RenPy. RenPy. Like sorry, the free tool. You could build it in Unity or Unreal if you really want to be like <laughs> super spicy about it. I'm not going to um, be super spicy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Twine is great if it's just yourself and you don't mm -hmm. illustrate, and you're like, I just want to show what I can do. Um, uh, VN is a bigger project. Like you're going to need art. You know, if you want, you can get music. Uh, you can get music for Twine games, but like, it's all about the experience you're trying to make. You know, when you make a VN, you're getting a specific look, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that might be distracting to maybe the story you want to tell. And so Twine, which is just words, might be more interesting or like more ex what you want. It's all about mood. Um, I always say do what costs less and you can do on your own. Because uh, if you can do it on your own and just test it out, you can always improve on it and add to it later. Uh, right. If you do a whole team thing, that's yeah. money. <laughs> Be like, yeah. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I would do. Or that's what I think that's what I'm still doing. Yeah. No, that's really good advice. Like, 
I definitely have like games and everything set aside and we have the story for it and we, I actually have the art for it. So yeah, I think I'll just work on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I wasn't sure. Cause some people were like, no, you don't really need a twine. I didn't have a twine. And I was like, okay, so do I not need one? And then I was like, what do I need to post on my like, um, social, my portfolio, my oh. writing portfolio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, trying to post a little bit of everything, like, my webcomic that I've done for, like, six years and then, like, some scripts. And I was, like, I should I show that I'm versatile? Like, I was just posting everything because I mm-hmm. wasn't sure exactly what they wanted to see specifically, you know. So, yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. I don't want to push you towards a twine, um, but I always feel like it's – if someone's on the fence but they see that you know what it makes to make a game in some way – I feel like it's always going to help. It's always going to yeah, improve no, it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Thank you. Yeah. I, I took notes on my Simpsons blog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question now, Destiny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got okay. all my stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so something that I wanted to ask is like, how does writing change, you know, from games to comics, right? Like, because I feel like that's, mm-hmm. that's it's, so, it's so interesting for me because like I consume both and it seems like you really need a specific tool set depending on what you're doing like does the player interacting with it change how you write it like how, how does the writing process change depending on what you're writing yeah um it definitely changes uh, other than the structural way that it changes like script sure, writing yeah, is very yeah. different um it's the i think my comic writing is very sun when you read it i think i have a tone when i write characters and things like that in comics that it's very personal and in games you're less personal and more okay. um you follow the aesthetic of the game to the core right so i see okay i don't write noirs on my own but love shores to noir so there's a tone that i'm matching to the game where my comics maybe wouldn't match um they'd still feel more like me so i feel like and i'm not saying you lose yourself when writing games <laughs> um, but you know you're you're kind of making a, a compromise to like write this type of story that you're aiming for um, and with games, you have to be so aware of all the other elements. So in comics, you only have to be aware of the artist that you're working with. And maybe the colorist like to know what the lighting sounds will be and the letterist. Um, and even editor who's there to be like, this looks good. Or, this is awful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in games, you don't have an editor. <laughs> in games, you uh, have a team that can do or can't do certain things and have also require a budget. So every time you're writing a script, you're also aware of the budget. And can you afford that animation or can you not afford that animation? Will the character be in this position? What time of day is this character going to be in? And so there's a lot more. I think I I would more link it to film. There's a lot Mm -hmm. more like I have to be aware of all of the moving parts that are happening uh, while writing this script um, because it doesn't exist in the vacuum the way maybe a comic would. You can kind of get away with more. I can write I can write one line in the comment where he's like he punches this character and this happens. And then for game script I have to write um you know a cutscene initiated no interactive gameplay. A uh, character will punch this character. We'll use it from this camera uh, and we'll I explain see. the lighting based on this and then we can resume gameplay but this has to happen. Um so it's a lot of like cause and effect cause and effect cause and effect kind of writing. Oh, that's so interesting. That's yeah, really I, interesting. I w- yeah. Yeah, because I'd never really, like, you know, thought about how different the process can be. And, like, as I was thinking of questions, I was like, man, this sounds really cool. Um, yeah. So, so to kind of keep keep on the comics train a little bit, you're kind of in the midst of a Kickstarter right now, right? A little bit with Jews Conflicts. Oh, like, yeah, it's a mini. I was like, am I running a Kickstarter? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, That would be at, like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Which one? Um, yeah, yeah, I was no, like, like really the, stressed. Because the opening pages look incredible. And like I love yeah. the premise for it. So t- tell us a little bit about that. How is that going? Yeah. So first of all, the artist is Sandra Gomez, also known as Dree or Saint Dree on Twitter. They're amazing. I've known them for like years. We've been good friends. And I think <laughs> she's like an incredible artist. Um, so we got to team up for this. and It was very exciting. Um, so Judas Complice is about uh, a young man named Desmond who was part of his college football team and they all basically take like they think a steroid before the game um, to get amped up and it turns them all into basically like massive werewolf killing machines and it like they kill uh, like a lot of innocent people it's a horror <laughs> I'm like preface it's a horror uh, a lot of innocent people and the other team before they all drop dead uh, from heart attacks and the only person to survive is Desmond and so he's clearly like traumatized 
by that event. And the story takes place about a couple of years later where he now works as a private investigator for another supernatural entity. And the two of them realize this drug is back on the market. And this is the first time he's finally going to get closure on what happened to him back in college. And so he goes on this basically little investigation with his new partner um, to find out what thing is turning things into werewolves. Yeah. You that have sounds such... hella interesting. Yeah. Right? Oh, such cool what? ideas. So <laughs> many cool premises. No, but dead serious. Like, I, was I just said I wasn't writing crime noir and then I'm like, here's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. I was like... No, but it's it's so cool. So if people wanted to support that, where where do they do that? Yeah, so the uh, publisher is Dauntless. Uh, you can go to Dauntless Stories. That's three S's. Dauntless Stories. Uh, dot com slash Judas Complex. Uh, that's where we are. Uh, that's who, that's where it is. Um, we're only I think a hundred <laughs> more backers away from fully funded, and we so we did it in a week, which is like. Yay! That's uh, incredible. Halloween spirit. <laughs> yeah. Please, please buy this book. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah, I'll definitely have that in the show notes. So if you get curious, please go check it out. Because yeah, like even like there's what five or six opening pages on there. I think maybe a little 14, bit more. Fourteen. I mean, Fourteen. Shit, I can't count. Uh, so yeah. go check that out because the art is fantastic and like I love the writing. Everything about it just looks so cool. I'm very excited about it. Right. I got to write like '90s sexist humor. I was I was very excited nice. about it. You know? <laughs> I love when they like die. So I was yeah. like, oh, ha ha. I love a slight spoiler from the opening pages when you're like, one of the characters was like, yeah, if I win this, I'm going to get a blowjob. And I was yeah, like, yeah, literally. I was like, he, he, he. I can, it's I can 1994. Feel you yeah. Yeah. This is the peak of a male existence. Yeah. <laughs> like, Guys only think about one thing. Yeah. In the I don't know how anyway. much that's changed, but moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the, the last kind of major thing that I wanted to ask you um, is how do you deal with it all? Obviously, we've talked about it. you're very busy, right? You have a lot of projects that you deal with. You're you know you're in school. How do you take mm-hmm. care of yourself in the midst of all that? Because I feel like for myself, like I when I get too busy, I take on too much, and then you know burnout inevitably happens. Like how do you take care of yourself in the midst of all that? Yeah, so I definitely burn out, and I'm not gonna say I'm the healthiest person. I'm gonna be frank about it. I don't think I'm the healthiest, but. I do follow a schedule, like a very tight schedule, annoyingly tight sometimes. Um, <laughs> like a, a great, a good friend of mine uh, who's long distance, like was like, hey, can we call catch up? And I was like, sure, send me a Google Calendar event. And I was like, they were like, really? And I'm like, sorry, I need to see it to remember yeah. I have it. Um, I, I follow a pretty strict schedule. Um, and by doing that, it kind of allows me to work on things uh, simultaneously. But the cool thing is that a lot of the stuff I do are domino effects. Um, as a writer, and that's a luxury I think that not a lot of um, like creative fields have, is that I can write a script and not worry about it after I've written it, right? So the comic can True. still be coming out, but I've already written it. So like Animal Heads, I'm writing maybe once or, or uh, once every month or every other month because it's Sam, who's my partner and artist for it, will take about two months to draw that script. So like I'm not having to pump it out. Um, as fast so I can write mm-hmm. it and then leave it you know and then I can do something else and leave it and then I can do something else and leave it and so a lot of those projects work in that way the only one that doesn't work in that way is games don't recommend it with games <laughs> games linger <laughs> linger they too long um, they don't but yeah that's that's really the trick is that you take projects that are small and that will take a bit longer to fester without you having to like control it and so you mm-hmm. can kind of do it and then leave uh yeah so do you find it tough to like slip back into a headspace for like a certain book or game or you know novel or comic or whatever as you're kind of bouncing in between them do you find it t- like tough to like slip back into like okay i'm writing this now or i'm writing this now or does that c- kind of come naturally i think it's a mix there's sometimes where I, I have no trouble at all and it's because they that's my dog growling can you hear her she sees her reflection <laughs> i believe it, yeah my dog will do the same thing <laughs> Like, wait, who the hell is that? She's all like, <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's just like standing in front of the fridge, like, I don't like this girl. Like, That's you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I actually, yeah, she's going at it. Um, I found that it's easy because I take breaks by doing other things, and okay. so me coming back to something is actually really refreshing. It's like seeing it with new eyes because I've been doing something else, and so I'm pretty the opposite in that way. Uh, sometimes though I do get burned out with long running things and need to take a breather. So 
I'm trying to write a novel and it's unsuccessful because that is a long term writing project and it's haunting me. Um, <laughs> so like I've already changed the story like seven times because I keep trying to refresh it for myself or like make mm-hmm. it more interesting for myself. And every time I do that, I get bored. <laughs> So hence all the projects. If I if I linger too long, I get um, a bit bored with it. So it's a negative mm-hmm. and it's a it's a pro and a con at the same right. time. Oh, that's awesome. I think I think that's all I had. Do you, do you have anything left before we, we mosey on to the news? I just want to say you're so incredible. Right? Oh, oh no. Right. I, I just told you I wasn't. <laughs> I know. But listen, especially listening and, and talking to somebody who's at a place where I kind of want to be. And that you're succeeding in it and that you're a female and you're another woman of color. It's really exciting to see that because we need that in the industry. So, like, one day I hope I can come to you and be like, oh, my God, I just got fucking hired. You know what <laughs> I, I mean? Want like, I, I want to be like, I'm I trying just, to put it out to the universe. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. I want to oh hear God. it. I want to know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. Oh, please do. Um yeah, can be posted. <laughs> yeah, care yeah about I will. Like I will. Got to work on this twine, and then I'm gonna send it to you. I'll send you a Google Calendar. Yes. And I'll be like, <laughs> please just look it over and tell me if it's okay. Oh my god, yeah, and just yeah. immediately send it. No questions <laughs> asked. I'll be like, oh, I have a thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. that was it for questions with me. We can mosey on down to Newstown. Yeah, let's go. Let's take a let's take a little trip down. Uh, we're gonna start with a story that. Uh, you know, I, and we all kind of had the same reaction with this one that made us initially worried, but actually made us very happy by the end of it. So I'm reading from Eurogamer, written by Ed Nightingale. Trans dev who left Guardians of the Galaxy team praises Eidos for crediting her and doing so correctly. A trans developer who worked on Guardians of the Galaxy, but left developer Eidos before the game's release, has praised the studio for crediting her despite her departure and for doing so with her new name. I apologize if I butcher your name. Chloe Verrieu worked on the game for three and a half years and was promoted to technical level design director before leaving Eidos a year before the game was released. It allows recent news, uh, sorry, it follows recent news that some developers on Metroid Dread were not credited for the game after leaving yeah. despite their work appearing in the game. Didn't they say like the, special thanks? Like the, yeah, what... Sometimes if they even get special thanks, some, sometimes no. the developers just don't get anything. Uh, Velia's expectations by industry standards was that her name would have been included in additional thanks rather than her specific role, a role that she took over from two predecessors. So Velia basically goes on to say that, like, you know, she had changed her name, in, like, kind of in the in the process of moving between studios and stuff. And Idos went ahead and took the extra initiative to credit her properly, to credit her with her proper name. And I just think that this is an awesome. That's like, awesome. You know, story especially because after especially the metro dread which is the most recent account but it seems to happen far too often where developers will leave and then don't get credited properly on projects and i think that's utter fucking bullshit um but yeah d let's go to you how do you feel about this news where's your head at well i really just think this is something we should continue to do moving forward because i mean like it takes all kinds to make a game and not just Mm -hmm. in the gaming industry but also um in the film industry i remember the big deal about um frozen and they didn't realize it was going to get as big as it got and then they like certain people got bonus checks but they had already let all the all the, like a lot of the artists go you know because they were on contract and they didn't see any of that money mm-hmm. and i was like that seems kind of shady you know what i mean because they they're the reasons they're part of the reasons why it's so successful so i always believe in crediting people even like on my web comic, like if any of my team were to leave and like go somewhere else, like they helped build what you're playing. And even, you know, you know, like, I think it's one of those things where people are well known within their circle, but outside of their circle, they don't get a lot of like praise. And I really mm. hate that about movies where we only talk about the director and the actors, but we don't talk about the guy who did the lighting. We don't talk about like, sometimes we talk about the music. Sometimes we talk about the costuming, but like, it's like they're famous within their the realm, color but grading. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like nobody really so talks important. about of, like all of that or the nitty gritty, the fucking green screening that people have to do. And like, like, oh, my God, I remember in Nightmare Before Christmas, like, there was somebody there was a team of people who had to like, like uh, take out the lines from like the puppets and things like that. So it's it's incredible to get credited and not just a special thanks to get credited for what you did exactly um, for the project. So I think moving forward that needs to happen everywhere where it's a creative space and you're mm-hmm. making things for people to consume. Yeah. 
Yeah, not only that, but in games especially, credit is worth its weight in gold. Like that is, yes. we just talked about it. That is how you get jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're not getting the full credit or you're not getting enough credit that shows like your skill set, it's harder to uh, push another studio to hire you um, with the knowledge of what you've already done. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, a big agree. A big agree. I'm glad that we're doing it more. Yeah. So why, son, uh, I'll, I'll ask you this then, because I mean, you know, you work in the space. Why do you think this is the standard? Why do you think that, you know, a lot of developers or publishers or whoever may be go for this additional thanks route rather than properly crediting people? Is it oh, just it's because it's easier? Or? No, no, it's not because it's easier. It's petty. It, I, I'm not kidding. Like this is, it genuinely happens. It big or small studios, it's pettiness. Um, it's pettiness and it's, uh, people sometimes akin more names to being less value, right? So if we have okay. too many names or too many people look involved, it looks like all our names are less valuable as a whole. I see. Um, and again, it's very old. It's very archaic. It comes from film. It comes from like tons, tons of like mainstream media's aspect. It kind of has that mental approach. Um, it's the argument, I think, that... Uh, uh, it's in comics when the writer's name is bigger than the artist and you don't know why because the artist is also working a lot to do it. So it's mm -hmm. it's that kind of weirdness with credit, I think, that lingers. And because you left, uh, the people who stayed uh, might often feel like, you know, our names are the most important in some way. Right. Um, and so there's a lot. Of, it's like that. It's that mixed with the pay. You know what I mean? So it makes like this kind of a bit of a nasty mess that's just lasted for so long. Yeah. Um, and it's became the standard. And so it's really, really cool. Like, like you mentioned, that someone breaks the standard <laughs> in any mm -hmm. way. Yeah, let's let's hope this continues to be a more regular story because this is awesome, and I think Idos mm -hmm. deserves to be shouted out for this because that's fucking awesome, and it's that's it's just it's it's the way that things should be. Yeah. Uh, moving on to story number two, which is uh, an interesting one, coming from PC Gamer, written by Natalie Clayton. Sega and Microsoft partner up to develop cloud-powered super games. Back in May, Sega expressed its desire to create what it called a quote-unquote super game within the next five years. Now, the Japanese publisher has entered a strate strategic alliance with Microsoft with plans to use the text giant's Azure cloud platform to power those ambitious plans. Uh, announced in a press release over the weekend, Sega announced that it had partnered with Microsoft to produce large-scale global games in a next-generation development environment. Notably, Sega cites the widespread deployment of 5G for this push into cloud tech, both in how it, how it makes games and how it distributes them. So it basically goes on to say that they're working on a new IP. They're calling it, it's all it is because quote unquote super game uh, with the words like global, online, community, and IP utilization being thrown about. So now Sega seems to be getting that Microsoft money to make something. MMO. Like an MMO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounds like, right? It's like an I mean, MMO. Yeah. Facebook so, metaverse was announced, so I feel like they're all connected. Yeah, right. So what do, what do you guys, what do you want to see come from this deal? I'll ask you first, because again, as a big fan of MMOs and, you know, with Sega possibly getting that Microsoft money and then working together on this, it seems like there's a lot of talk about it kind of living everywhere kind of thing. What do, what do you want to see come from this partnership? You're going to tell me I boot up my PC and it's going to have Sonic <laughs> on it automatically. No, I'm just kidding. It very um, well might be. That very well might I be mean, the thing. Do you, ooh. Do you remember the era where you used to download little like chibi characters as music players on your computer and you could put them in the corner? They're like, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it like that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you're like, like, a, like, a, like you're having your own Neopet, like, and you're raising it and it's oh part of the God, Sega, Neopets. like, international. <laughs> like, wow, I can't even remember that. I miss them. Can we get right? those back? No. They're still um, there. It's just infinitely worse. Oh, I bet. But, um, but yeah, so I definitely feel like it's going to have to be something that's... If, the fact that it's IP-related means it's PC. It's systems-probably related because of Microsoft. It's using the cloud space, so the OneDrive and that whole setup. Um, it's probably going to be available on an install, something you tap in. It almost feels mm -hmm. like maybe the new Skype or like the new um, online MMO. Like I think Destiny yeah. is pretty hidden much. I think it, it has the potential to be MMO. I just really just hope it's a massive PvP Sonic game. <laughs> yes like, all the sonic characters just, going at just it. everybody and you have and everyone's online and it's like that imvu chat log really loud yes. and aggressive like just yeah that's yeah <laughs> do you what do you want to see out of this mmo because like imagine like because imagine if it's the kind of thing where like you can play on your phone and then immediately go to playing on your computer you can go to play on your console right because isn't the idea of cloud-based yeah, tech technology being able to play anywhere what do you want to see come from this 
I think you have to connect everything to it. Sure. <laughs> I would like to see that like connectivity across the board, obviously. I think I'm not really sure what they're going to do. Um, like, other than like nostalgia baiting on like bringing characters back that we absolutely love and creating a world for that. Um, I'm trying to figure out like with this power and this money, how are they going to make it 10 times better than any other MMO that comes out? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because like they're coming out all the time. So um, I'm curious to see what they're going to do. But right now I just feel like it's, it's really vague. Like they just threw a lot of like nice adjectives out there (laughs) (laughs) and trying to get people sighted. Like, Oh, the cloud and Ooh, IP. 5G. G. (laughs) And you're kind of like, Oh, okay. What are you going to do with all of that? Like, sounds great, but what are you going to do? So I think I need some more time. I need to see some more stuff to get excited right now. I'm kind of just like, okay, Sega. I love Sega. Like, you know, just for nostalgic reasons. So, shit, if they were to, like, do a Streets of Rage fucking MMO, <laughs> I would be down. Yeah. I'd be yeah. absolutely down. Um, but I think we just have to wait and see. So, like, if they're going to bring back some of their old IPs and create a new world, I do think that they have, like, they're sitting on, like, with the Sonic movies, they actually have, like... They also have um, Vocaloid. Yes. They actually have some things that are, like, really really still popular and so Uh like they were to take that and kind of mesh it together i don't know if they were to do like kind of like a kingdom hearts thing but with sega characters and looney tunes i don't fucking know you know what i mean just capcom that that, that would be yeah yeah, that would be dope so i think we just gotta wait and see what happens yeah i hope we get a uh sega uh sorry a sonic mmo that is also PVP, and we just combine both of these things, these ideas together, and just have the ultimate MMO, and all the other ones will be dead. Um, moving on to our next story, written by Eurogamer by Matt Wales, former Uncharted creative director Amy Hennig is working on a new Marvel game. Amy Hennig and Skydance Media are working on a new quote unquote narrative driven blockbuster action adventure set in the Marvel Universe. Hennig, perhaps best known for her work as head writer and creative director on Naughty Dog's first three Uncharted games, joined Skydance back in 2019. Prior to that, she was working on a highly anticipated Star Wars title in conjunction with Visceral Games that was ultimately canceled. So I am unbelievably excited about this. Hennig is an incredible, credible writer and creative director. And her having time to like go nuts in the Marvel Universe, especially like after Spider-Man and after now Guardians. I'm so, so curious of her bringing that like uncharted pedigree, that level of just detail and understanding to Marvel it makes me so, so excited. Um Son, I'll go to you first. Are you a big Marvel person? Do you care much about the superhero world? I used to. Okay, I'm, fair. A, I'm a big, I'm a bigger DC person, which is a bull fair enough. Because I don't care for their movies either, but right. I like their characters more. <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask you both the same question, and you know, Son, I'll ask you first. What character do you want Amy playing with? What 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 world do you want to see her in? Because obviously, it's going to be something that we haven't seen. It's not going to be Spider Man or Wolverine or Guardians. What character do mm-hmm. you want her to get her hands on? From Marvel? Ooh, yeah. The X-Men. Any any form of X-Men. I The X-Men are my favorite part of Marvel. Um, I would like them to come back. Magneto was right. And we should all <laughs> sign with him. Uh, so I would love to see the X-Men. Mutant powers? Already already the coolest concept in all of Marvel. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's a fair point. D, what do you think? Where, who, who do you want to see Amy playing with? Um... I would like to see, I mean, like, obviously Marvel, but I'm just like, I just really hate what Marvel has done with all of my favorite characters when it comes to, like, movies and stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. I will forever be upset about Storm, forever be upset about That was brutal. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's just how I feel. From the bottom of my heart, I fucking hate Mm -hmm. what you did with her in the movies, and you need to do better. The new one? Or the old ones? All Halle of Berry them. or the new... Oh, yeah. It's all a, of them. a little bit of a journey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all of them are terrible. And I was like... I, I'm a very big person against colorism. And I hate mm-hmm. that Hollywood's like, oh, the only way we can get like a, a black yeah, actress to play da da is to make sure she looks kind of mixed. Like, she can't just be black. She can't just be from fucking Africa unless mm-hmm. we put her in a slave movie or some shit like that. So... Yeah, I'm just really upset because Storm's just this beautiful black woman from like Africa. She's darker than I am. And I just, I want to see her. I want to see that. That's what I want to see on the screen. I don't want to see any more Holly Berries. 
I won't see any more <laughs> of that shit. Or whoever else was playing her. I just stopped watching. I literally stopped watching the movies. Because every time they had her in a movie, I was like, you're just like treating the character I, I feel like I connect with the most. Like, you know, her color doesn't really matter. But it mm-hmm. does, you know. Mm-hmm. And especially during the time that they made these characters, right? Like um, back in like the 80s and the 70s and stuff, like color was a big thing. And I, what I always thought was really great is that like uh, the creators, they knew that when they created the characters. So it was kind of really shitty to see like how they took those characters and brought them into the movies that everybody was really excited about. And mm-hmm. they didn't give them the same kind of respect or regard. They just put her there because she was sexy and a, a big name. But anyways, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to get off of that. No, um, actually, can I can I add yes? something to that? Yes. I would love to hear both of your opinions on this. Um, right now in comics, there's been a big push from creators of like the original characters of Marvel and DC have been suing for their rights back mm-hmm. um, to these characters. Uh, and I just would love to hear your thoughts on that because it, it, it harps on what you've been talking about and how these beloved characters are maybe made from, you know, folks who are going through their own experiences at the time. Like, I think, like, uh, I, I'm, I'm weak in this comic aspect, so no one yell at me, but, like, Superman has a lot of references to Judaism and the story of how a lot of Jewish people were persecuted in the U.S., and that's why Superman has those strong ties in that way. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's completely gone in our media now, yeah. right. and things like that. And so... Um, I'd love to hear like your opinion on that. Um, I'd be like, turn it on you. <laughs> How do you guys no. feel about like creators kind of taking back some of their ownership to these characters? Mm-hmm. I think they should. I I really do. I feel like, I mean, it's like it's like your baby, right? I, for anybody who's an artist or a writer, like when you create something, you put a part of yourself in it. You do the research, like you you create this thing because it represents not just your ideal of something, but like it's putting a piece of yourself out there and to see a piece of yourself out there, something that you've created for a certain um, reason and seeing that all of that has been wiped clean. It's no longer the thing that you wanted it to represent. I, I think that's really painful to watch, right? So I think they have every right to sue and want their characters back from these big budget fucking companies that don't really care about that kind of representation. They just care about the dollar signs. And that's, that's a problem that it's a huge problem. It's like taking someone's story and uh, changing all of the characters races just to fit a certain narrative, because that's what, you know, you think is going to sell better. Absolutely. I think these creators (laughs) should get their characters back and they should be the represented the way that they originally created them. And that doesn't mean that these characters can't evolve, but like if you created characters with the core meaning and those meanings are like um, representative of a, a, a certain people or a minority, then yeah, that's something that we should keep. That's something positive that our, our world needs. So why take that out? Yeah. I don't yeah. know, for me... Uh, that for was me, like a long answer, sorry. <laughs> no! For me, with regards to the comic stuff, I think it's totally fine because really, to be honest, it's not going to change anything for the public. The people who are watching mm-hmm. these movies and investing them, you can't tell me that if they start paying the creators for licensing these characters out, nothing's going to happen on your movie front. When you're consuming the media, it's going to be the same thing because Marvel isn't going to turn around and say, oh, you know what, yeah, fuck, you know, spider-man or iron man or whatever we don't want to pay their creator anymore and they're going to lose a massive money maker for themselves so even looking at it from a business standpoint all they're going to do is now properly pay the creators for exactly. using the characters yeah. so in that respect like it's not going to change anything for the general consumer but the people who created these characters who you know like you said invested a part of themselves into them uh i think that's you know i think that's totally fine and i think it's totally right for the creators to get paid properly because again okay you know, they deserve that. And their you know, their families and everything else deserve well, that. Well, yeah, like um, comics writing is not a lucrative business, you know? Mm-hmm. If your character, like the, the, I think the, the they interviewed the guy who did The Winter Soldier because I think that's a newer, like, yep. series that got built into the movies. And yep. he, like, think he's, he's like, he made, like, 5K from it out yep. of, like, a whole franchise. Like, now Bucky Barnes is, like, the most, I mean, I'm again yeah. I'm a Marvel fan, so, <laughs> but he is like the most beloved, um, like uh, character right now um, in a lot of the franchise, and like it's very interesting that the guy who made him is like, yeah, 
I like don't have money. <laughs> yeah. And that's and really sure. sad. Yeah. yeah. That's really, really sad. Especially when and you like, see your character. I know. I'm sorry, I, just, I keep cutting you off. But yeah. especially when you see your character in movies and series and you're like, yeah, I created that. And like you don't see anything from it. You're over here living paycheck to paycheck. Like he only mm-hmm. got five k. You know how much? I don't know the exact number. But yeah, yeah, it but was still, not, right. Yeah. It was not a lot. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, that's it's hard. Some, yeah, it's like people just need to get paid properly, and like that's the thing. If the thing takes off, like I mean, what there was a similar situation with the writer of The Witcher, right? How he turned around mm-hmm. and he sued CD, CD Project because he was like, Red, yeah, yeah, because he was like, you, I gave you it for like fifty, but like again, he made next to nothing off of it, and they turn around and are making millions upon millions wouldn't you want to turn around to the creator and be like you know this originally stemmed from you yeah yeah Yeah. so um but yeah so i I think i think that's a i think the creators just deserve to get paid i think that's what it is it's Uh, sad i think that happens in the creative world just generally like people don't want to pay artists like as soon as we hit a recession the first thing to go is like artists don't get paid and like artists contribute so much to our society in ways that people don't even realize. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Yeah. They just never want to pay them. They're like, oh, well, you got exposure. Exposure doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> doesn't right. put yeah. food on my table, you yeah. know? Additional thanks to the creator is pretty much what they get, right? So shout out they, to yeah. shout that out. Guy. Shout <laughs> out. Yeah, right? That made we had one soldier. meeting with them. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the last thing that we're going to touch on before we close out from Tom Phillips over at Eurogamer, everything in last night's PlayStation State of Play. So I'm going to run through the list quick, and then we'll each kind of talk about one thing that got us stoked. Uh, it started off it started off with Deathverse, which is a TV game show murder em up It's coming in 2020, spring 2022. We Are OFK got a new trailer, which was absolutely hilarious, coming in 2022 as well. Um, Bug Snacks is getting a free expansion called The Isle of Big Snacks. Uh, and that's coming for free in early 2022. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is coming in December. Uh, Death's Door <laughs> is uh, coming to PS4 and PS5 on November 23rd. Uh, Cart Rider Drift is coming to PS4 in 2022. King of Fighters is getting a beta test. That game is also launching in February. First Class Trouble, which is almost like a third person 3D, like, you know, Among Us type thing is coming to actually this will be out it'll be out on the playstation store for the playstation plus subscribers the day that you're listening to this uh we got a new star ocean the divine trail the divine force trailer which is a new star ocean game coming in 2022 and the grand finale was a extended look at little devil inside which was shown off you know uh last year but we still know it's coming in 2022 there was you know this this state of play was met with a bunch of mm, people weren't that excited people about weren't it. that I, excited yeah. per, personally i think there's a bunch here for me but i'll save that uh, until my turn uh son anything off of this state of play that gets you excited there's quite a few things but i think the biggest one is uh it's death store um for uh playstation mm-hmm. um i really love that game i mean First of all, the UI in that game is so good. And the humor of the like fourth wall breakage in that game is also very, very good. Um, so I'm really excited to see it. Uh, I've been wanting to play it on PlayStation. So I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah like... I, bought, I bought it on Steam and I started and I was like, this is amazing. And I think I got distracted by something else. So I know. I know what you mean. I'm stoked. D, what about you? I know we were, we watched part of this together. What are you, what are you feeling? What, what got you stoked? What got you excited? Little Devil Inside looks so good. I like. Right. I want to play that. I'm so excited about that. And of course, I got to give a shout out to Bug Snacks because that was the first game we ever reviewed. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited to see what kind of new oh. snacks that they're going to have on full Big circle. Island. Yeah, right? it's like a full yeah. circle. Yeah. So um, yeah, Little Devil Inside because it just looks, the art style looks incredible. It looks so cute. And um, yeah, Bug Snacks because... Bugs snacks. Yeah. 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 Obviously, massive shout outs to Death Door, you know, Bug Snacks and Little Devil Inside. But for me, I am so fucking excited for We Are OFK. The yes. art style, the humor, the writing, everything about that game just gets me so stoked. And like I keep just I want to see what the game actually plays like. I'm so curious to see it in in, in you know in motion because the, you know, t- the, the trailer was so meta talking about the state of play trailer itself. Like, go watch the trailer if you haven't yet, because it's just so well put together and it looks hilarious. Um, the only thing that gets me a wee bit nervous is the episodic nature of it, which I think can be hit or miss depending on how long or between episodes. 
Um, but I am so fucking stoked for We Are OFK. I, that game cannot come soon enough. But that, everyone, brings us to the end of the show. Son, before we go, A, thank you so much for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I hope you come out, hang out with us again in the future. Those are words I've tried to say. Um, but before, Yes, but, please come back. But oh, also, yeah, I'd love to. where can people find you? Tell us, hit us with your links before we close out. Yeah, so I'm mainly on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash bogboogie. Um, you can find me there. You can also find my website, The Boglands. I keep the theme strong, <laughs> ongoing. <laughs> um, uh, those are the two places you can find me. You can also find Perfect Garbage on Twitter as P- Perfect Garbo. Um, you can also find us on perfectgarbage.com and perfectgarbagestudios.com. I got both domains. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I know, it was a, it was a feat. Um, and Love Shore <laughs> is on Steam. Uh, I think those are all my links. Uh, hit me up. I'm pretty active on social media. I- I'm terminally online. And uh, that's where I'll stay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And thanks again for coming. It was an, uh, it was so much fun talking to you. Like your insight and the amount of amazing stuff that you're working on is just yes. incredible. So oh. thank you. It's been so much fun. That means a lot. Yeah. Please feel free to reach out. I'd love to chat again. Anytime. I'm reaching out now. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Perfect. I'll keep keep my uh I'll keep my eye on it <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much for watching make sure you go support sun in all the ways possible we will see you next week for team burnout and for sun peace out bye, thank you. bye. No, I've just you know I've been in more spaces. people need to be saying that shit to you. Yeah. Like, what you write games and you're getting a PhD, girl. You are what I want to be when I grow up.